the courtroom, for those of you who could join us over there. Uh, I'm just amazed at how it can be simultaneously so monotonous and mind-numbing, and yet so exciting to see what the prosecution is going to come up with next, or what the judge is going to deny next. And of course, what are the witnesses going to say? That's always super exciting. Um, but thanks for being here in support. I know Vernon appreciates it, his family, and of course, you know, we're all in this together. We're going to do things a little bit differently this evening. The, one of the, the attorney who's been giving us the debriefing every day, Ajna, she's still consulting with the other attorneys. So we're going to give her a chance to finish that and come over and eat something. And Mark Castell from the Cornucopia Institute is here to join us tonight. And he's got a presentation prepared, and then he'll also be on the panel that we'll have later after David and Ajna give the debriefing from court today. So Mark Castell is here with us. Thank you, Mark. Okay, since I can't see anything, I'm going to assume that there are 4,000 people in the audience. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm really happy to be part of this movement. Uh, my name is Mark Castell. I'm the senior farm policy analyst, and I act as uh, I am the co-founder of the Cornucopia Institute. We're based in Cornucopia, Wisconsin. How many people here are from Wisconsin? Woo! How many people have heard of Cornucopia? Woo! Okay, all four of you, thank you. <laughs> Cornucopia is the farthest northern post office in Wisconsin, and uh, uh, we, they named the town after the Cornucopia Institute. So, um, Cornucopia acts as an organic farming watchdog and an organic marketing watchdog in terms of assuring that the, what we're all looking for, authenticity in the, in the good food movement, is embedded in our products. So um, whether you're talking about um, organic, local, grass-fed, uh, everybody wants to make a buck over on this now that it, it has cachet. So um, Cornucopia is neutral on raw milk, on the attributes of raw milk but we're not neutral on the rights of citizens, farmers and consumers to engage in, in the marketplace and to make informed decisions uh, freely in terms of what they're gonna eat. And this is a economic justice issue in, in, as well as a food justice issue. So uh, we have the right to make these informed choices. Um, anybody here not from Wisconsin? I know David, and I, I see some kind of some hands. So in Wisconsin, we think that it's very important to eat a balanced diet to be healthy. So you need to have one serving, David, from each of the, is that you? Uh, from each of the uh, Wisconsin food groups every day. So you need uh, one serving from the beer group, the bratwurst group, the butter group, the cheese group, and the ice cream group. And I, I really believe in that. It's good for mental health. So. What do we know about raw milk? What do we know about prohibition? We know that prohibition doesn't work. It didn't work in the 1920s. Everybody who wanted to drink pretty much drank. The only difference was we created a, um, an underworld of crime and, a, and an industry uh, uh, in a uh, military industrial complex, if you will, to prevent people from drinking, which they drank anyways. How about the war on drugs? That's doing a great job too. Everybody who wants drugs in this country, recreational drugs, can get them. The only difference is there's, we're just literally littering the, the, the um, uh, border in Mexico with dead bodies, and we're um, uh, filling up our jails and we're going broke, incarcerating people on, on relatively minor charges. And so now we got the same thing. Hello? No. Uh, turn your cell phone. I forgot this. The reason I have this is I don't have a watch and I have to be careful I don't go over time here. So, um, so we're now going to fill up the Sauk County Jail with another dangerous criminal here. Uh, this is just wrong. It's uh, legally not right. I'll talk about that in a second. So um, what about informed consent and what about making these choices? You know, I've seen these um, 
two wheel, I'm in my car, I have my seatbelt on, I have airbags, but I see these, um, somebody, is there a 12 year old boy who can tell me how to turn the belt off? <laughs> it says zero um, for the volume, I'm not sure. So at any rate, I'm in my car, I have the airbags going, and, um, and then uh, around me there's these really loud things without mufflers with two wheels, I think they're called motorcycles. They're inherently dangerous. I think, why aren't we banning those? I mean, they're just a hell of a lot more dangerous than eating raw milk or consuming raw dairy products. How about body piercings and tattoos? There are risks involved in almost every medical procedure, elective surgery. We make these informed, uh, we make decisions based on informed consent as adults. I, you know, worse yet, we have things like hydrologized fat, and aspartame in our diets, uh, NutraSweet. There is um, scientific evidence that these are bad, deleterious to our health. Um, NutraSweet, which they're now trying to put into milk without the requiring, in essence, warning label. Uh, at NutraSweet, there's good scientific evidence that it's a, um, a neurotoxic agent. Um, in fact, in one of the speeches I make, I quote a study one can of Diet uh, Coke, usually when I make this speech in a general audience, I'll ask how many people drink Diet Coke. I'm, even if I could see you, I don't think there would be too many in this crowd. But one Diet Coke per day, one, uh, increases the risk of a stroke or, quote, vascular event by 61%. I don't think raw milk is in dangerous. It's legal in half the states, it's legal in the European Union, and the Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection, which some of us here in Wisconsin, I'm an ex-lobbyist for the Farmers Union, we used to refer to it as the Department of Agribusiness, Trade, and Consumer Deception. <laughs> you know, they once allowed this workaround, if you will, uh, called cow sharing. And they did this because technically it was illegal to sell raw milk, but certainly it's not illegal to uh, buy and sell cattle or to buy and sell an investment in your farm. And these were people who were very, very aware of the decisions they were making. They were having to make a financial commitment up front. And they eliminated those arbitrarily. And uh, so, you know, I understand the Hirschbergers are running a private, um, buying club, um, what about the constitutional right of freedom of association? I think we have the right to make uh, private contracts between each other as long as it's not going to be harmful to anyone else. And raw milk is not an illegal commodity, it's not regulated by the food, or I'm, I'm sorry, by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. This is a food product. I said cornucopia is neutral on raw milk. Like a lot of people in the agrarian uh, society, I had raw milk for years and I lived to tell the story. I recently started buying it, consuming it on a daily basis. It's been uh, quite a while ago since I've consumed it. I'm honored to be on the Weston A. Price Foundation Honorary Board of Directors. That's why I'm honored, it's an honorary board. Uh, and was once awarded their, uh, I don't know what they call it, Activist of the Year, I think, award. But for me, this is about freedom and economic justice, even though I personally think that raw milk has some health attributes. People should be able to make that decision on their self. We shouldn't be selling raw milk. We should be selling food freedom. So why is this happening here in Wisconsin? I can tell you that it, there are very powerful competitive interests that don't want us to consume raw milk because they can't economically control raw milk in the marketplace. There might be one lobby firm that's more powerful than the dairy lobby in Wisconsin, and that's the tavern. So, you know, we, we're drunk on power. We don't want people to exercise their freedom because we, don't, we can't control that marketplace. That's the story that's happening in there. Make no mistake about it that whether the Republicans or Democrats are in charge, DATCAP is an agency that's been very, very receptive to carrying the water for the dairy lobby. So I'm going to wrap up with just a couple 
couple more things about what we work at, on the, at the Cornucopia Institute because it's really intertwined with our ability as farmers to produce uh, wholesome food according to a standard that more and more consumers are uh, subscribing to and they are willing to pay a premium price, they're willing to drive out of their way to get it. We should be fostering that, that kind of connection, creating community around food, which is what we're doing here tonight. Um, so we're fighting for that authenticity. Many of you, I know, support organic food. Um, the working definition of the word organic is changing. Um, when I first got involved in organics, it, at the beginning of the commercialization of organic food in the 1980s, no one would ever think we could use the word organic and 9,000 cow factory farm in the same sentence. That's the largest operating organic dairy in the country now, competing with farmers in Wisconsin whose cows have names, not numbers. How about 100,000 birds in a building with the eggs labeled organic that never go outside? The birds never go out. Forget about the law that says they have to go outside. How about uh, escalating organic imports from China? Vegetables, is, is the milk really organic? If they feed the cows corn and soybeans and it comes from China, we don't really know if the feed is organic. So we don't even trust the Chinese anymore dig 